All right guys, we're working on the junkyard jet boat. To catch you up, we're trying to put an engine in this old jet boat that was rotting away in the corner of my yard for the past seven years. There's a poker run on our lake in a couple months. Me and my friends want to try to go to that poker run in this old junkyard jet boat. But first, we've got to get an engine in it. So today we're gonna to do a lot of machining to get these adapters built for the exhaust. And at the end, if I actually get them built, we're gonna do some chemistry fun. I'm gonna try and anodize them a color, probably red. We'll see how that works out. So here's our engine. It's a roughly 500 horsepower LS1 out of our old race car. And we do have some used exhaust manifolds that I've got bolted on here. Now what we're trying to do is build everything from this part to the back of the boat for the exhaust, and it's gotta be water cooled. So I took the 3D scanner and scanned the engine so I can mock everything up and show you guys what I'm talking about. So here we are in this virtual lake. Here's the Enigma houseboat that we've been restoring. Hopefully it actually looks like this one day. But for now, we're focusing on this jet boat engine. So here's how the water should flow through the engine if we can build this correctly. So water will come from the jet pump through this tubing into the front of the engine, cool the engine down. It'll come back out of the front of the engine and into the bottom of this exhaust manifold. It'll cool it down and come up through our exhaust adapter that we're gonna try and build today. The water will come out of that adapter and then go into this stainless exhaust tubing which is a three inch diameter tube inside of a four inch diameter tube. So that provides a water jacketed area for the water to flow through. And then that water will flow out at the very back of the boat, out back into the lake. So here's the adapter we're gonna try and build today. I showed this to you in the last video, but I drew it in Fusion 360. I 3D printed it out. And there's two reasons why we need an adapter here. So one is this is a rectangular exhaust port and we need to convert it to three inch round tubing. So that took care of that part. And the other is we need a place for our O2 sensor to go. So this is gonna be a fuel injected engine. We've gotta be able to tune it. And the main way we do that is with an O2 sensor to monitor our air fuel ratio. Now there's a few places that make full manifolds that have adapters in them. And the cheapest ones are like $2,000. So since this is a junkyard jet boat, we're gonna try and build this on our own. I've got some aluminum stock that's thick enough to CNC these out of. We're gonna use the old cheapo CNC router. It's one you can buy online today. They're about $1,000 or cheaper. They're meant for wood, so like carving, cutting boards and things like that. But if you run the program slow enough, you can cut aluminum. So this is gonna be the most work this thing's ever done. The estimate from Fusion 360 is like 20 something hours of uh, CNC time, so we'll see. All the software is free except one, so Fusion 360, you can download, draw everything up you want. The software that runs the CNC router is free. The only thing I did is buy for $10, there's a guy out there that makes a program where you can use an Xbox controller on your laptop to drive the CNC router around and you can use the buttons to start and stop it, so that makes it a little easier. All right, first thing I've got to do is level our vise out that's bolted in here just to make sure we're getting this thing as flat as we can. I've got a multimeter hooked up here so it should beep whenever the tool touches the vise. And then we've got to level out the piece of aluminum before we start machining on it. And I got it to within, I don't know, like 20 thousandths of an inch level, so that's good enough for us. All right, we've got the program loaded up. Everything's leveled out as good as it's gonna get. So the only thing left to do is hit the old go button on the controller and start a ton of machining on this thing. Okay, I did not have the end mill tightened up in the machine good enough, so it just fell out. Bit looks okay. The machine went crazy for a minute, so I just reset it. I'm gonna get this bit back in, tighten it up good this time, and keep on going. Whoa. 
Well, we made it through the first couple operations there, which was cleaning up the outside of that aluminum stock, and then we drilled a couple of the water holes. Now is the biggest feature that we're gonna have to cut out of this, which is the rectangular exhaust port on the bottom. And it shows it's probably gonna take about four hours to cut that out. Machine's been running for a couple hours over there. It's doing pretty good. I'll come over and kind of get rid of some of the chips every once in a while. The amount of aluminum shavings it's making is crazy. All right guys, check it out. So we've finished that side. It looks pretty good. The surface finish, it's better than I thought it would be. So, I mean, it's good enough for us. So now I'm gonna flip that stock over. We're gonna do that three inch hole in the top, which is where our three inch stainless tubing will go. So that one's gonna be a little quicker. It shows about two hours for that one. Okay, next we're gonna get away from the CNC router for a minute and go to the drill press, drill the four holes that hold this adapter down to the manifold. And then we'll drill the water passageway holes in each side. That's what's gonna actually allow the water to flow through these adapters and keep it cool. Well, y'all know I'm cheap, so I'm running Ryobi crappy tools around here, but uh, we made it through that. I've got this on the lowest pulley setting, lowest speed, highest torque. Okay, the last operation we've got to do on the CNC router, drill out the O2 sensor hole, then I'm gonna tap it, and then that should be it for now for the router. <laughs> It might be hard to see, but I'm gonna get you all in here. So we're taking 10 thousandths of an inch on every pass and it's running at 40 inches per minute. So if y'all get one of these cheapo CNC routers, you know, they're designed for wood, but if you just take 10 thousandths of an inch out, it'll nibble through it pretty good. And it leaves a, a pretty good surface finish too. Real quick, I wanna test out and see how accurate that is. Let's measure with the old calipers real quick. Okay, oh, come on. All right, here we go. Oh, oh man, that's all right. Okay, let's see what we get here. Roughly 1 1.843, 1 1.845, 1.845, 1.845. So what, we're maybe two thousandths off? I mean, that's good enough for me for old uh, CNC router that's meant to do wood. So now I've just got to sand down these surfaces so they look kind of like this. I already did this side. And then we're gonna go try and anodize these.
finished sanding these things. That took a couple hours. So I, I stepped up through the grits from like 300 grit up to 1500. It's not, you know, like a mirror finish, but it should be good enough for us. So here's the part I'm worried about most is the anodizing these red. So I've anodized some things in the past. I've done blue and black. I'm worried that the red dye, it might actually come out pink. This might be the best that these parts will ever look. It, uh, let's hope we don't ruin them. As I was getting all these pots down to start getting ready to anodize these, I got this one down and there is an actual living brown recluse in this damn pot. A real recluse, fiddleback. He's alive too. This is from the houseboat. It's been uh, last year when I was starting to gut the houseboat, found some brown recluses in there. I sprayed the whole houseboat, fogged it out. I thought I got them all, but it looks like they have made their way into the shop. So now I'm gonna have to burn the whole damn shop down. Okay, here's the quick like 60 second explanation on how anodizing aluminum works. If you imagine, here's our aluminum block and the surface of it's pretty flat. So when you anodize aluminum, you grow this oxide layer on the surface of aluminum. Looks like a bunch of uh, kind of pores. And basically your dye, whatever color you pick, you dye it and the molecules fit inside these pores. So, you know, red, blue. And then the third step is you put it in near boiling water and it seals these pores up. So now your dye is sealed in these pores. Interesting fact, you can't anodize aluminum white. So there's not a molecule small enough to fit inside the pores. Scientists have apparently not come up with a small enough molecule yet. Now, this is not meant to be a tutorial on how to anodize aluminum. There's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube. I'm not a chemist. My chemistry experience is that I took a chemistry class in the junior college. I think I got a C and I've watched all of Breaking Bad. So I don't know if that counts. Uh, most people use like a lab grade sulfuric acid. We're gonna use pool supplies. Okay, so I have this uh, spa pH decreaser. It's sodium bisulfate, which when you mix it with water, creates sulfuric acid. We have some drain cleaner, which is lye. We're gonna use that to etch the parts in first. That'll get all the oil and crud off of them. To dye it, I've got some uh, Amazon special red dye. And then to seal it, it'll be water mixed with this nickel acetate. So the nickel acetate helps with the corrosion. Safety first, I've got a good respirator, gloves, long sleeves so I don't get acid on me. I'm gonna use welding wire to hang these in the acid. I don't know if I'm gonna get any of this right. Start with a gallon of water in here. Okay, we'll see if that's enough to submerge the parts. Yeah, that'll be good enough. Okay, in with the lie. Uh-huh. Should start bubbling. So we got a pretty good etch on those parts with the lie, so all the gunk's kind of cleaned off of them. Okay, time for sodium bisulfate. One. Two. I've got the first uh, exhaust adapter in the sulfuric acid right now. The positive terminal from the power supply is hooked up to the part itself. The negative is hooked up to this plate, which is off to the side. That's the cathode. And we're gonna run this thing for about an hour. While that's going, I'm gonna heat up the dye because the dye is gonna be about, uh, what's it say? 110 to 140 degrees for the dye. And then our nickel acetate needs to be at about 190 degrees. It's gonna start happening pretty quick once I kick the power supply on. So here we go. Okay, here we go. We kick this on. We should start seeing some bubbles going. That's all she's got, 1.2 amps, 15 volts, okay. So apparently I already blew the breaker, trying to run two hot plates off of the same outlet, I think. I think I blew a breaker. Oh, sh oh the file server's in the way. There we go. All 
right guys, it's been a little over an hour. We're still at 1.45 amps. I'm gonna pull it out. We're gonna go to the dye. Then we're gonna go to our nickel acetate. So here we go. Power supply off. I get the dye into this container over here. We're at 140 degrees on the dye. So I gotta get this in here. Ooh, looks like Kool-Aid. Okay, just to here, rinse the acid off. Here we go, into the dye. Ooh. All right, now we wait. Now 10 minutes and we're gonna find out <laughs> if this did anything. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but I think it's a little red. We'll go right into the nickel acetate and that'll seal in whatever color we got here. Here we go. Into the nickel acetate. Ooh. All right. Let that cook. Okay guys, um, moment of truth. Here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> actually it's not too bad. That ain't too bad. It's a little, it's not as dark red as I thought it'd be, but it's not bright pink. All right, guys, I'm pretty happy with that. It didn't turn out bright pink, but wait, there's more. I got a little icing on the cake we'll do, so give me just a second. All right, boys, what do y'all think? We've got one pink and one red. So I left this one in the anodizing bath longer and it came out red. That was about two hours versus one hour. So, you know, that's kind of appropriate for the kind of work we do. So that's okay. Main thing is the anodizing worked and the engraving came out okay, I think. I got the O2 sensors threaded into each one. Those look good. The water fittings on each side, those came out pretty good. And it looks like they fit on the engine and they match up to the rectangle exhaust ports pretty good. So that's a good sign. One of the friends of the channel, Steven, commented about the O2 sensor placement here. And it probably is too close to the primaries. Really, you want this further downstream in the exhaust where all the gases are mixing together. So we'll see how this thing works out. It might not be that good at idle, but hopefully at higher engine speeds, uh, it'll work out okay. I'm pretty happy with the old wood carving CNC router that's dirt cheap. It's plastic, you know? So it's not meant to do any kind of metal, but as you guys can see, it did it anyway. It tore through pounds of this junk. So there you go, guys. Don't be afraid to try some of this out on your own. I had no idea what I was doing with that CNC machine just a couple years ago and just watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to draw stuff up. So, you know, if you had to commission these parts from a machine shop, there is no telling how much they would charge. So it's pretty cool that you can do this stuff kind of a, a home gamer in your own garage these days. So anyway, we'll build the rest of the exhaust in a few weeks when we get the engine in the boat and can mock that up. So that'll be coming soon. Anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We'll see y'all next time.